Hello, and welcome to the Amber Stitt Show. I am your host, Amber Stitt, and today we're going to speak a little bit about focusing on talents. And we have Scott with us, and we're going to dive deep into the focus on talents category. And Scott, this is so important because you've taught me a lot in the business, and I actually just reached a one-year anniversary of the podcast. And so I thought having you here almost at the 100th episode would be a great way to kind of take that moment to celebrate the success of the show, but also to celebrate your success in business too. And not a lot of people know that your story. And so we go back in time. I know a little bit about it, but not all the details. I think it'd be fun for people to know how you got into the business and why you picked disability insurance too, because that always confuses people a little bit. It's not the most sexy conversation or product out there. So. So I think having you here in Arizona, in the Arizona office, let's share a little bit about your background, because I think you've really embodied this pathway of success, but it's hard work and it's a journey, but you've you put over 30 years into it. So can you take us back into how did, how did this even become a thing for you? I guess my history, if you will, started way back in 1990. I was working at a hospital while I was in college. Mm. And uh, it was in a neurobehavior hospital. And so some of our patients had some, uh, let's just say, issues controlling their behaviors. And one of the things that happened is one, a patient escaped, ran out the front door. Oh. And it was on the, the facility was located on, on, on the edge of a highway. And so, you know, everybody runs as fast as they can to try to oh my goodness. get up to him so that he doesn't run out in traffic and get you know, killed. Well, as I'm running in hot pursuit, as one might say, uh, <laughs> there was a water meter box. And, you know, I thought, you know, literally went to my head and I can't step on that thing. I better step in front of that thing because I don't want to slide. You know, I'm wearing dress shoes. Oh. And I stepped in front of it and there happened to be a hole because there was a leak in the water meter and it rode it away. And full speed, you know, my body kept going, my legs stopped. And so, you know, oh my goodness, both ligaments in my left knee and three ruptured discs and three bulging discs happened. And so that uh, put me through a few surgeries and uh, 29 months of therapy. Therapy, you know, going to PT on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 8.30 to about 11.30 for 29 months. In so order back, to back in 1990, I don't know that I want to ask how old you were then, but okay, so you're telling the story about this person escaping, and then we stop on this awful crazy story about your disability trying to save somebody can we talk about that person were they okay oh, he was uh, <laughs> one might say apprehended and so he did not get into the lanes of traffic so but, i'm uh, picturing this so you're hobbling <laughs> over and this person's being rescued by others but now you need to be rescued as well yeah pretty much just like i need to go to the emergency room uh, yeah started a pretty long pathway of orthopedic adventures if you will and, you know a number of surgeries and a lot of therapy for sure well i'm sorry you had to go through that i knew that there was a story you never told me the full details but uh this was before being in the business with in your current business this was correct. a different job correct it was a job while i was in college mm-hmm. and so you know with that i got to experience how group disability fails mm. um uh, number one, it hadn't been presented to me as an employee benefit, and so I didn't have it. And number two, how poor the workman's comp system functions. I remember my weekly check being $163 a week okay. to live on. That was it. So, you know, I ate a lot of beans and rice on a really <laughs> fancy day. I might have rice and then beans, mm. you know, switch it up a little mm-hmm. bit. That was a long time. It was a long time. It, it was tough to get back, you know, and learn how to kind of redo everything, you know. I guess that tells the story that... We know that there's statistics and there's genetics and there's things we face, but then there's these weird moments that happen in life where you just, you can't predict that. And so even though you're young, I think you still have some residual effects that flare up here and there too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a constant, you know, dealing with it from time to time, but, um, you know, that's okay. It Mm -hmm. it, uh, gave me an appreciation, you know, for kind of what, I had gone through and what others would go through and gives me, gave me a perspective on what's important and how do you do things. And now a word from our sponsor. Navigating the medical disability insurance industry can be complex and overwhelming, but fear not because help is here. Introducing MD Disability Quotes, your trusted partner in securing the right coverage for your unique needs. We understand that as a physician, protecting your medical subspecialties is of utmost importance. With over 30 years of experience working in true own occupation disability insurance contracts, our team of experts is dedicated to putting your best interests first. At MD Disability Quotes, we believe that when the unexpected happens, you deserve the exact coverage you need. 
That's why we go above and beyond to tailor your contracts to your specific needs with the best discounts. Say goodbye to the uncertainties and let us take some of the risks out of your life. Our team is committed to providing you with the guidance and support you need to make informed decisions. Why wait? Call or email MD Disability Quotes today to schedule a free consultation with our team of independent brokers. Well, you did graduate without, you were not in finance per se when you finished college, correct? So correct. how did you end up in the insurance business? I finished up my bachelor's and just starting on my master's and my then current insurance agent, you know, asked me if I would be interested in looking at his business. He needed some help. He was doing a lot of things with the chamber of commerce folks and, you know, McDonald's franchise holders and just said, would you mind, you know, getting involved? You know, I said, well, I'm Seemed to have just a little bit of time on my hands, so why don't I come over? And, you know, I started spending, you know, a couple days a week, you know, just in the afternoons or maybe mm-hmm. in the morning. And it just seemed to be kind of a really good fit for me. Um, I think it was life insurance to begin with? It was mainly life insurance and, uh, you know, executive benefits for those McDonald's franchise holders. Mm. And then some of the um, you know, group health insurance, quite frankly. Oh, you know? That's right. So the health insurance component, too. So I think you do share your story a little bit with your clients, but, um, you know, you go back and you you started out. Did somebody kind of take you under their wing then? Was this person somebody that helped to mentor you or did that come a little bit later? What happened was he was a person that knew how to market and how to engage businesses in a market advertising driven role. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to come in, explain to me some of the things of how do you find a product that you like? How do you find a type of person you like? And how do you you advertise or attract that business? And so, you know, there's certainly people in our business that are really good at socialization and they can find people just through, you know, shaking hands and, Mm -hmm. you know, being at the country club. Some of our good friends are, it just, it just happens. Anywhere they go. Exactly. You know, some of them, you can <laughs> drop them off, you know, anywhere. And all of a sudden, you know, two hours later, they know everybody's name mm-hmm. and, you know, pat them on the back. And that wasn't necessarily always my personality. My type is more, you know, I want to run a very organized business, very structured. And part of that came from working with some of those McDonald's franchise holders. Okay. You know, you go to McDonald's, it doesn't matter if it's here in Arizona, you know, back in Colorado, in Europe, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same. It's the same process, same product. The objective then is to, you know, how do you solve this one problem for as many people as you can? And that's what they do, right? They, yeah. And I feel that a lot of the leaders that I'll follow will say it's really about the, the, the process and being consistent. You could be smart, but it's a little bit about awareness, but a lot about consistency and process. 100%. So you would say that's one of the things if people were to take away something from this episode, meeting you, getting to know you. We haven't completely dove into your background and we'll get to that throughout some series of episodes. You could say that's part of the the foundation of why you're successful today and why you're able to continue on and be excited about your business and work all over the nation is having that process. So no matter where you go, you're able to do that. So you have some freedom there once the processes are set up. That's correct. I mean, the reality is, you know, you can know a little bit about everything or a whole lot about one thing. And so I Mm -hmm. chose to do one vertical, you know, understand every single thing I can about disability insurance and why it works and who it works best for and how to apply it and how to, you know, build it correctly and how to get the maximum discounts and how to create the most efficient vehicle or acquisition for a client. And that's what we wanted to do. Over a decade of being in this business, I mean, over 20 in total, uh, paralegal before, focusing on where you're talented. We've done a lot of, we'll say, team engagement over the last couple of years, you and I and some strategic Mm -hmm. partners, really diving in. It could be any assessment, but really diving into how you tick. You knew at a young age that, not that you're not out shaking hands and meeting people that way, boots on the ground, but there's, there's a process and a way that you would prefer to run your business. And we'll get to that in some other segments here. But for the Pathways audience, I want people to know that There is a way to align your talents and not really change who you are, but find what works for you. Because if you can provide a solution to people in your way, that's more genuine, but it's also a lot of fun when you're doing things the way that fit your personality. And so you found that younger, it sounds like, but you ran with that. Sure. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy (laughs) being social as much as anybody else. So what I always wanted to, from a business standpoint, is understand how to make something rentable and repeatable right? Mm -hmm. Just do it over and over and over again. And because of that, then you end up with volume. When you do that, you end up with better deals. And when you end up with better deals, Mm -hmm. your clients are more, you know, more well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so that was what my goal was. How do I drive down costs 
so that I could pass all that cost savings on. You know, using that process is just, it made sense to me because I would rather spend the time that I might need to be socializing to engage new clientele, Mm -hmm. you know, doing something else. So I'd rather spend it on marketing dollars or advertising dollars. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our work that is out of the office is working with different organizations, leadership, speaking, teaching, and so on. So certainly don't want to make it seem like you don't want to be out and about, but I know that for you and I, we have to be really dialed in, have efficient meetings. We'll talk about that more in the marketing segment, but um, that allows for us to be good at what we do and then be able to prioritize how we can help and when and how do we then keep the cost down, overhead low, but also help bring that that value price point to the client, to our, our clients. So that's helpful. Do you have any um, war stories you want to share? Anything fun, interesting that you go, gosh, if I would have talked to myself 20 years ago, I would have done X, Y, Z instead. The idea of fun or interesting <laughs> is not really <laughs> correlating with what I think about that. Um, I would say just... The reality is most people don't take time to get focused on what they want. They have to discover kind of what they want first. Mm -hmm. And then once they do, are they willing to pour everything into it? You know, there's a whole lot of people that, you know, want what the top of the hill, Mm -hmm. you know, has, Mm -hmm. but they're unwilling to climb. It's always surprising to me, you know, know, I have this conversation often with, with, you know, folks in my office, but, you know, I get to comment of, you know, I want work-life balance. Well, you know, that's great. <laughs> um, you can have life, but you if you don't work a hard, you know, work really hard and work a lot, then you may not have as much life as you had wanted. In other words, you know, you got to go out and kind of bust your hump, work really hard, and, you know, do things that your colleagues and your friends won't do. You know, if they're mm-hmm. saying, gosh, I'm working my tail off at 40 hours a week, you know, probably not going to get you to where you want to be. Figure out how to go work 60, 70 hours a week, you know. Every one of my clients, you know, right now, they're all finishing up, you know, residence, right? That's what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, they're working 78 hours a week. And that's, that's just what part it of takes. the deal. Yeah, they know it's that. It's what it takes. Do you think that that mindset has changed for the worse as we have gone on? I think people are wanting to work a little bit less, but I don't think necessarily they want their needs mm-hmm. or wants to go down, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, you, you kind of get what you do. And, you know, if you if you work harder than anybody else, you're probably going to get more things than other people do. Mm-hmm. And, I, and sometimes they don't realize the balance there. You know, life's tough. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of obstacles in front of you. And, you know, you sit back and let those things happen to you. Then, you know, life's going to happen to you versus for you. I appreciate you saying that. I feel that sometimes in business ownership, or if you have some of these ideas, maybe you are working for somebody and you have these extra hours, you're going to start something else or invest your time. It can feel a little lonely sometimes because your ideas might not resonate yet with where you where you can see this strategic plan unfolding in front of yourself. So sometimes you just got to give it some time and try different things too. I know that we have. You do. One of the things I think is very important is that you always allocate when you're, you know, just two components into business, right? There's working in the business and there's working on the business. And and during that time that you're working on the business, what you're trying to figure out is how do you open up the next new market? How do you bring a better solution Mm -hmm. to your client? How do you work more efficiently? How do you interact better with your team? All that stuff's really, really important. And but You've got to allocate not only time, but you probably need to allocate resources too to mm-hmm. trying something new. Mm-hmm. Because if you never try anything new and you never interact any differently, you're going to get the same results. Mm-hmm. And so keep trying, keep you know, swinging the bat. You're eventually going to hit another ball. And that's what really matters is just keep working at it. It was important for me to have you on this show eventually to dedicate something outside of insurance because I felt that there was an alignment with our partnership and some of those core values there. And you just got to really work hard and we take turns kind of one will be out doing something. We, we cover each other's backs. So really finding a good team to then help. I guess the alignment is not having somebody that's exactly like you, but the similar core values can be really helpful. In closing with focusing on talents, I feel that the work ethic speaks for itself when it comes to how you've built your business and I'm happy to be able to do more with you on that. So I'm really grateful there. Anything else that you'd like to share as a takeaway? I always like to give people the conversation, something to think about from the intellectual perspective, but I think we've kind of covered it already, but you really just, you got to show up and keep doing a little bit more than the next person. I mean, that's really, there's no excuses, right? Well, there aren't. You do. You just have to continue to work as hard as you can. 
and put in every effort you can. Know who your audience is. Work whenever they're available. If you only want to work when you want to work Mm -hmm. and that doesn't align with your client, probably not going to be very successful. And, you know, like you mentioned, you know, having the right team that fits together. You know, one of my silly analogies is if you have a puzzle and all all the pieces are exactly the same, they don't fit together very well. Mm -hmm. They all need to be a little bit different so that they can, you know, fit together and really be a nice snug fit. Mm -hmm. And if you got people with different skills, different characteristics, lean on them for the things that they bring to the table. And hopefully they lean on you for the things you bring to the table. And together you should be able to be quite successful. We work with families too. And just to kind of wrap this up, that's business advice, but that goes into the the house too. And so when someone's opposite of you, which often partners can be, can be frustrating at times, but just understanding that we wouldn't want everything to be the same all the time. It might feel good for a little bit, but we need that balance. That's the balance you're probably talking about. And as you're looking at teams, we we deal with boards, other organizations that are important to us. We don't want everyone to be the same. We have to have that collective. You do. Yeah, you need, you need yeah. pieces and people from all different mm-hmm. kind of walks of life, you know, viewpoints, because if all you have is the same thing, you going to be pretty vanilla and whatever that means to one mm-hmm. but it's going to be the same all the way through and that doesn't make for a very balanced or round organization or mm-hmm. family life truthfully so i think that's a great way to, to land this where if you don't feel that you've really invested the time to, to develop yourself first you're not going to know what kind of team you might need so i would start there because once you get that synced up and you might not have the perfect people always right away But as long as you know who you are and working within your talents and loving what you do or trying to get get to that that job that you love, it it really doesn't feel like work, especially with all those hours you're talking about. You can build it out doing something you like, then it doesn't feel... There's hard days. It's not always gravy, but... (laughs) So I appreciate you being here and we'll uh, keep talking about some other aspects of the pathways, but thanks so much for having the conversation. Sounds good. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Amber Stitch Show. For more information about the podcast, books, articles, and more, please visit me at amberstitt.com. Until next week, enjoy your journey at home and at work. Thank you for listening.